from NBC News. This is Today with Kathy Lee Gifford and Hoda Kotb from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza. Plus the right way to eat uh, messy summer foods with etiquette tips. Just in time for your weekend barbecue. You think that's easy? That's it's not. There's a, there's a correct way, Hoda, to eat that Corn? That piece of corn, it's, yes. It ends up in your teeth no matter how you do it. Yes, All it right. does. Thank you. It's rude to... No, it's not. It's not like it. <laughs> I'm so excited. It's Friday, Friday, and if your weekend plans include dining among the company of other people, we've got some food etiquette rules that could come in handy. All right, so before you dig into those mess messy ribs or corn on the cob, you're going to want to hear what Lisa Gachet has to say. She's the CEO and founder of Beverly Hills Manors. Manners. Hey, girl. Hello. How are you? Hello. Hello. So there are ways to eat yes. Even the hardest, yeah. most difficult fit. And we're going to do ribs and corn and watermelon. And you guys have... Um, uh, lobsters, and I have a Maryland crab from Costa's. Yay! Yay! Okay, so let's start with the meats. Yes, yeah, so first of all, we have two options here. We have the formal and the informal, okay. depending upon the situation. So first things first, we have to put our napkins in our okay. laps, ladies. Yes. Lift it with the left hand if you want to unfold it very quickly, oh. and spread across our lap. Oh, oh uh, halfway? That way. It, I, oh. This okay. is to protect anything that may okay. fall on our clothing. So the meat. Okay. okay, so we have the meat here. Now, you have two options. Informal, you certainly can pick up the meat. That's eat okay. It, no problem. If you can, just two in. fingers. Two fingers looks the nicest. Uh huh. So we take a little. Oh my gosh. Mm, little oh. bite here. Oh my gosh. Now, what do we do to wipe our hands? We have these beautiful little wipes. Not done yet. Uh huh. Well, moving on. <laughs> if we had our wipes, we'd open a wipe too. Mm -hmm. Or our napkins. We can absolutely but wipe little fingers on the napkins this way. Just to clean ourselves, that's so option number one. If we can get a close-up, no. there's only a no, close-up on the No, 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 there is. This is, just a, this is just some weird shot. It's okay. not staying. So no. no licking of fingers. No, yeah. this is no what licking of fingers. No, no sucking, sucking on the bones. Uh, oh, come on. None None of that suck the bones. Let me ask you this. Sometimes you're at a thing and everyone's picking up a fork and knife. Yes, so, should so you just I will do what show you, doing? exactly. And by the way, if you know how to properly hold your fork and knife, continental style, then you can <laughs> really maneuver anything you want uh -huh. off of the bones. So uh -huh. for do example, that, we have the rib. This is content. Oh, yes. yes. Do you? Okay. And then we can easily. By the way, my parents made us use fork and knife for every piece of mm -hmm. chicken since we were little kids. So we had to eat a wing. chicken. We had to eat it with a fork and knife. And the reason, that, ladies, is that mm -hmm. you're chasing food off of your plate if you're not using your fork and All knife. Right. That's the purpose of the chicken. Right. Okay, let's move on to corn. Okay, so moving on to corn, we have two choices. So for the oh, informal, right. yeah. when we see a picnics and barbecues, uh -huh. we have the corn with the holders on either side, the prongs inserted. And here's the trick. Hmm. You want to, first of all, if you're going to butter and season, you want to butter only a few rows at a time, season a few rows at a time, and then you eat. Why is that? Just because you don't want to get extra butter and seasoning uh -huh. all over your okay. face. Then you're eating left to right as if it were an old-fashioned typewriter. So, By the way, this way. that is sugar sweet. Mm -hmm. Is and that that's unbelievable? The best. Summer thing? food corn is oh the best. Oh, my God. So that's option number are one. You, are you allowed to go all the way to the end with one Absolutely. bite? Absolutely. Well, you know, you need to breathe in between. <laughs> oh. And, you know, and, and by breathe. the way, the smaller the bite, the less will you'll get the, uh, okay. have the food kernels in, in What your if I looked over at Kath and noticed she had a kernel stuck in her teeth and I see I her with her fingers? <laughs> دوستان عزیز با درود فراوان به برنامه مادر و کودک مام تاک خوش آمدید امروز صحبت بسیار جالبی داریم با خانم لیسا گشه که ایشون نه تنها اینجا در شهر بیورلی هیلز خیلی کارشون و به صلاح کلاس هایی که آفر می کنن صدا کرده و خیلی از خانواده ها بچه هاشون رو از سنای خیلی کم من جمله خود ما بچه ها رو شروع کردن در کلاس های ایشون که کلاس های کتالین هست ولی در کنارش من فکر کردم امروز این بحثمون رو این صحبت مادرانمون رو و سفر مادرانهی که با هم داریم رو با ایشون در رابطه با منرز، آداب و رسوم و ادب. ادب از اون به صلاح نکته خصوصیات فرهنگی هستش که خب ما از کوچیکی که بزرگ می شدیم می گفتن که ادب نزد 
ایرانیان است و بس ولی من فکر کردم شاید جای بحث و گفتگو باشه برای اینکه خیلی از اوقات وقتی که ما در صف شاید سینما یا تئاتر یا جایی هستیم من خودم که چندین بار شاهد بودم که میبینم یه سری از این آداب و رسوم و یا ادب واقعا خوبه که دربارش صحبت بکنیم ادب سر میز ادب در رابطه با استفاده از تلفن هامون ادب و آداب و رسوم در رابطه با دوستیامون مادری و پدری کردنمون و خب چه خوب که امروز با خانم لیسا گشه این بحث رو باز بکنیم ایشون پیش کسبت و در اصل کسی هستن که 10 ways to raise your etiquette quotient یعنی اگر ما بگیم که هوش ادبی وجود داره که ایشون خیلی قطعا بر این باور هستن که وجود داره ایشون هستن که با کتابشون که Beverly Hills Manners هستش که این چه خوب کتاب خوبی هستش که ترجمه بشه به زبان فارسی برای شما بینندگان گرامی که فقط فارسی زبان هستین ولی اگر خلاصه بکنیم ده نکته ای که ایشون ربط میدن به هوش ادبی فرد این ده نکته رو براتون میخونم و بعد ترجمه میکنم نکته اول که بهش توجه میشه این هستش که dare to be polite بنابراین اینجا هستش که intention شما و اون intentی که دارین بر این هستش که میخواین با ادب باشین بنابراین با ادب بودن از ابتدا در قلب فرد و نیت فرد آغاز میشه نکته اول نکته دوم این هستش که enforce the golden rule این گلدن رول اینجا در آمریکا و به خصوص در کشورهای غربی نکته‌ای هستش که بهش خیلی توجه میکنن چرا به خاطر اینکه گلدن رول این چیزی رو نکته‌ای رو بهش اهمیت میده که شما اون جوری یا اون شیوه‌ای که دوستتون رو یا همسایتون رو یا همسرتون رو یا فرزند فرزندتون رو باهاشون رفتار میکنین و اینتراکشن دارین اون جوری اونها رو تویت بکنین یا با اونها رفتار بکنین که اونها شما رو با شما رفتار بکنن بنابراین اگر یه کاری رو دوست ندارین با دیگران هم اون کار رو انجام ندین این گولدن رول هستش خب نکته چهارم میت و گریت میت و اینکه شما باید علاقه مند باشین و انرژی نشون بدین بهش ارزش قائل باشین که با دیگران خودتون رو آشنا بکنین و به صلاح دست بدین در چشمشون نگاه بکنین و میت و گریت باشون به صلاح معاشرت بکنین <تصفيق> این از اون نکته های مهمه که شاید خیلی از ما به خصوص ماهای ایرانی آمریکایی که اینجا هستیم بیشتر میت اند گریت با خودمون دوست داریم بکنیم وقتی یه جایی میریم یه عروسی میریم یک مهمانی میریم یه کنفرانسی میریم شاید بیشتر با دوستای خودمون و اون کسایی که میشناسیم بیشتر دوست داریم بچسبیم و با اونها صحبت بکنیم ولی ایشون میگن بخشی از اون به صلاح ادب یا هوش ادبی این هستش که شما فرای اون به احساس کامفورت یا راحتی که میکنین پا بذارین و با دیگران با یک غریبه با کسی که آشنا نیستین خودتون رو آشنا بکنین دست بدین باهاش و میت اند گرید نکته بعد هستش اسمایل uh, یور کامرا بنابراین همیشه خنده لبخند شادابی داشته باشین برای اینکه نمیدونین که کی شما رو نگاه میکنه نه تنها اون بلکه خنده شما لبخند شما دیگران رو خوشحال و شاد میکنه چرا که نه Uh, never let them see you uh, sweat okay بنابراین هیچ وقت عرق نکنین یا اگر عرق می... عرق کسی هستین که عرق زیاد میکنین uh, با استفاده از دئودورانت و چیزای مختلف خودتون رو نگه دارین و یاد بگیرین که چه جوری uh, بوی عرق ندین و عرق نکنین خب uh, چند نکته دیگه هستش که اینا رو میذارم خود خانم لیسا گشه توضیح بدن um, لیسا welcome to the show welcome to mom talk Thank It's you. such a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you for having me. Um, so I wanted you to continue the rest and expand on it. So number seven, dine with? 
decorum, <laughs> daily. <laughs> I'm glad I could read that. Yes. So it's funny. Uh, typically, mm -hmm. when people uh, seek out someone like myself, mm -hmm. they they tend to associate dining skills mm -hmm. with manners. That's probably the number one visual that people have when it comes to this type of education. Mm -hmm. And because we are living in a different world today where we have two income families and schedules are off the charts in terms of the children are in many cases sometimes overly scheduled and activities can occur late at night. There aren't opportunities, uh, certainly not as many opportunities for families to sit down and have a meal together. And the art of setting a table and having, uh, you know, fine linens and um, really, you know, with flowers and candles and beautiful china, just even if it's your everyday china, this, um, this sort of act does not really occur in the way that it did when times were much simpler. So there isn't a lot of experience for children to learn how to dine properly. And frankly, there's a lot of adults who um, may not have been taught when they were you know, growing up and, and they don't have the tools to pass it down to their children. So this is a reminder to for us to try and at least um, incorporate one day of the week where we can sit down with the family and set a nice table and certainly put away the electronics and have everybody's attention um, and, and enjoy a meal together where we're not, you know, in between activities and throwing food down our throats while we're standing in the kitchen. That's so beautiful, and it's such an important piece of the peace learning journey. So if we're learning to have more peaceful experience or connection with food in our families, in our households, with our children, um, I think there's nothing more precious and sacred than what you just described, how you described it. And you have such a graceful way of teaching. I know our children, our three children, um, who took your classes and engaged in your special learning, um, they have really benefited tremendously. And it's brought a lot of peace into our lives. Oh, so happy. And, um, <laughs> and, you know, it's really beautiful because uh, you're right, the, the um, conscious parenting nowadays is also taking effort and intent, intention to slow things down and do prioritize that one meal at least right. one meal a week, where right. you're sitting down, you're setting the table, you're putting flowers, you're lighting candles, and you're honoring that evening or that meal together, breaking bread together, yes. and honoring the time you yes. spent together. And it's funny, um, it's, you know, I don't think children understand that, you know, we constantly feel a pull of our children asking us things, mm -hmm. wanting us to sign, you know, slips for field trips and all kinds of activities that are going on and they're kind of asking us while we're busy. But what, you know, what I tell families is that when you're sitting down to a meal, you know, we hear a lot about talking, you know, in terms of everybody going around the table, sharing what happened during their day. But I tell the children and the parents that this is also an excellent time to review your week in terms of what needs to be signed. Not that you have to bring those pieces of paper to the table, but at least you have everyone's attention rather than, you know, pulling on mom's skirt while she's trying to do laundry or something where she's, her mind is not there so she can't listen and yes. focus. So it's an excellent way to practice the conversation skills and have everybody's hopefully you know, undivide, was that undivided attention? Is that's that the right? Word? That's right. Undivided <laughs> attention, exactly. which is undivided so hard attention. to find nowadays. Exactly. exactly. Very good point. So if you would like to uh, cultivate peace learning and enhance and elevate your uh, etiquette quotient and be uh, more peaceful as a person, as a human being, I think... Um, Prioritize, pay attention to this, and make it a routine. Create that rhythm in your lifestyle. I think it's beautiful when um, you set a day like uh, Shabbat or a special night or an evening um, where you choose. You choose this is a sacred time for our family. 
it is Sabbath, it is a time that we honor, and we agree that we are going to sit together, break bread together, and give each other that undivided attention without technology and screen exactly. and all the distractions. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. All right, let's move on to your next tip, number eight. So we have, oh, so this is a good one. Mm -hmm. Practice the magic words. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's funny when I ask children what they think are the magic words, you know, I get the funny sort of quick answer, which is abracadabra. <laughs> and yes, that is a magic word. However, it's not the one I'm looking for. Um, but there, when I talk about the magic words, the, the idea that I want people to have is that the reason they're called the magic words is because when you say them to someone, it's as if this magic fairy dust is sprinkling on the person you're saying them to. So it's they're designed to really just smooth out any miscommunications or anything that um, may be misinterpreted. So when you use them, and I talk about the five main magic words, so number one, please. Mm -hmm. And when someone says please, somebody typically says thank you. Mm -hmm. So that's number two. Mm -hmm. um, you're welcome. And then the other two sets of words are hugely important. And they are excuse me mm -hmm. and I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So these are words that I say can be, you know, they, they, there's no possibility of them being overly used. You want to say these words as much as possible, and you use them when in doubt. And they really do help to smooth over anything that can happen because it, they, they can make a huge difference in impact. So for example, if it's something just as mindless, let's say, as walking through an aisle at the grocery store and accidentally bumping into someone, if you don't stop and say, excuse me, then you, you know, and just keep going on, that person will automatically think, you know, how rude. But if you just take that beat mm -hmm. to acknowledge that you did bump into someone, you got into their personal space, maybe they fell down, you know, just to stop and even look what happened and be mindful enough to pause in that instance, then that immediately makes them feel better, that they were acknowledged. Yes, yes. And it's just that simple act. Um, and I will attest to this because it was, um, I think, second or third session where our children had attended Lisa Gachet's um, manners class, Beverly Hills manners class. And um, we were driving, as we all do, moms in LA. I was driving um, our daughters to their gymnastics and it was one of those busy days. Mm -hmm. And um, our son, Cyrus, he was uh, coming along and accompanying us as he sometimes does. And um, I remember there was a moment of frustration where you know I was just feeling frustrated because I had to go from one thing to another and the kids were arguing in the back and Cyrus just paused and he said um, with a soft voice he said mommy thank you thank you for driving and thank you for and and the way he said it Lisa wow. it was so heartfelt mm. I mean I just I, it brings tears to my eyes now and it did then because I had never heard you know, him communicate that way wow. in a deep um, greatness. Uh, there, there was such greatness and gratitude right. and meaningful gratitude. Right. It just hit my heart and it just felt so wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I remember in that moment just closing my eyes and praying and thanking you oh. because honestly, I felt a connection. I felt that he had picked up this communication skill, he had connected the dots mm -hmm. because you had communicated it in that class. And he wanted to share that experience at the time. It's not that they don't feel grateful or they don't feel the appreciation, right. but it's when you teach them about those communication skills that then they're able to practice. Exactly, yeah. and I think you know what I tell parents a lot is that I'm here to reinforce mm -hmm. the good work mm -hmm. that you do at home. Mm -hmm. And we know as parents, a lot of times when we communicate with our children, it falls on deaf ears. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So to have a third party come in 
and validate or reiterate something that you have told them maybe umpteen thousand times. Right. <laughs> they hear it differently mm -hmm. from this outside authoritative mm -hmm. source. Mm -hmm. And what I talk about are arming children with tips mm -hmm. and tools, mm -hmm. but really tools. So I, uh, when they take my class, I, I talk mm -hmm. about providing them with an imaginary manners tool belt. Mm. And this tool belt, you know, I try and describe similar to what a handyman would wear with the hammer and the wrench and all these tools that they need, mm -hmm. measuring sticks, etc. But that the tools that I'm providing them with are, you know, appropriate for different occasions. Mm -hmm. So the magic words and him feeling thanks and that gratefulness towards you at a time when you were clearly, you know, just a little bit agitated and overwhelmed, let's say, um, he saw that yeah. and he felt like that those words might help smooth things over and that's exactly what it did for you. Yeah. Yeah. And how wonderful that he was conscious enough mm -hmm to do that at that mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. So thank so you. Thank I'm so thank you. <laughs> thank you. So grateful. Um, so for our viewers, uh, اگر با ما هستید به برنامه مام تاک توجه می‌کنیم با خانم لیسا گشه که ایشون فاوندر بیورلی هیلز مانرز هستند و اینجا در شهر بیورلی هیلز کلاس‌های بسیاری برای کودکان و نوجوانان می‌ذارن کلاس‌های کاتالیان کلاس‌هایی که مانرز و کامیونیکیشن رو در, uh, تدریس می‌کنن و تاکید ایشون با گریس فولنس با اون استایل زیبایی که الان مشاهده میکنین بر این هستش که به بچه ها بیاموزن چگونه اون لغاتی رو که شاید خیلی از ما پدر و مادرها درخواست میکنیم از فرزندانمون به بچه هامون میرسیم میگیم که بگو پلیز بگو تانکیو بگو خواهش میکنم خیلی ممنون سلام بکن وقتی میبینی مادر بزرگ یا پدر بزرگ یا فامیل یا دوست رو ایشون با یک استایل خیلی گریس من چون خودم بچه هم کلاس برداشتن میتونم بهتون بگم که خیلی شیوه و روشی که استفاده میکنن رو من میپسندم و تاکید میکنم به خاطر اینکه در این شیوه پیس لرنینگ در این شیوهی که خیلی با آرامش با متانت ایشون معنای این کار رو به بچه ها یاد میدن همونطوری که من مطرح کردم معنای تشکر یا شکر گذاری رو به بچه ها جوری می آموزن که پسر من در یک موقعیت که احساس کرد که من یه مقدار خسته شده بودم یا یه مقدار انرژیم داشت می رفت به خاطر رانندگی یا اون کارهایی که باید کارهای مادرانه مسئولیت های مادرانه به من برگشت و تشکر کرد از من و این تشکر خیلی کمک کرد برای گرم کردن قلب من به عنوان یک مادر بنابراین از ایشون تشکر کردم و برای تمام شما که توجه می کنیم به برنامه و دوست دارین بیشتر بیاموزین یا مطالب ایشون رو دریافت کنین کتاب بسیار بسیار خوبی دارن ایشون Beverly Hills Manners که یکی از کتاب های بسیلر هستن ایشون معمولا در تاکشوهای بسیاری مثل Today's Show, NBC و تاکشوهای بسیار در لس آنجلس و مثلا انترنشنالی میشناسن ایشون رو که ایشون آموزش میدن برای اینکه بچه ها و یا حتی بزرگ سالان اگر برای مثال یک میهمانی هستش که میرن و قرار هیر اف استیت و یا کسانی که سناتورا و کنگرسمنا و آدمایی که بسیار مهم هستن رو ملاقات بکنن شامی هستش که در وایت هاوس باید اتند بکنن ایشون تمام اون مطالبی رو که شما احتیاج دارین بیاموزین که از نظر آد با رسوم و به صلاح جوری که باید رفتار بکنین رو ایشون بهترین منرز رو که دیگه مال شهر بیورلی هیلز خودمون هستش رو به شما می آموزن کتابشون رو تهیه کنین لیزا where can they find your book and how can they um, enroll and connect with you for these classes yes thank you so the book is available on Amazon okay. and Wonderful. it is uh, still in Borders, what's this? Okay. I'm trying to think of what yeah. uh, bookstore we still have available. Mm -hmm. uh, but Amazon is the easiest way to purchase it. You also get, of course, a slightly better price. Mm -hmm. And um, and and 
We don't advertise, however, um, our website at beverlyhillsmanners.com mm -hmm. is the best place to reach us. Mm -hmm. And on the website is a complete list of our class offerings mm -hmm. for children, for teens, and we also work with adults, and we also provide corporate training to businesses and brands. Fantastic. So there's a lot of different offerings and um, you can email us or call us and we're happy to to help. There is the <laughs> website. You see the website right there. So if you like to connect with um, Lisa, uh, go visit the website and um, make sure that you connect to the community. Subscribe so that you can get um, the latest on classes and updates. And if you are uh, connected to a corporation, a school, perhaps a mommy group or mommy community. I'm thinking, this is what I'm thinking, that for our uh, mom group, mom talk group, and our school group, that we should start these uh, party books, these parties with um, Lisa Gachet, where we bring kids as well as parents, right? We want to have these parallel experiences, these peace learning experiences where Lisa Gachet will come and um, enhance and cultivate peace in our communication and how um, we build on this um, um, etiquette quotient, right? I love that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's fabulous. You do it in such a grateful and peaceful way. Honestly, I feel such, I, I just feel so graceful just sitting oh, next to you. Thank you. And so <laughs> just by association and just being in her presence, you're going to find yourself a little more graceful and, um, and have better etiquette. So, Lisa, I know nowadays um, a hot topic is cell phones and how yes. to handle our technology. Um, can we talk about that? Absolutely. Uh, I think the biggest issue that we have, well, uh, second to the safety issue, I mean, if you turn on the news, you see how many reports there are about pedestrians having these, you know, life-altering experiences because their heads are buried in their phones and they're not paying attention whether they walk into a pole or walk off a cliff. Mm -hmm. So second to that is this whole area where where my domain comes into play and that is that our, our children are not having as much opportunity to engage in face-to-face -face interpersonal exchanges. And you know, it, it, I've taught, I have two daughters, mm -hmm, first mm -hmm, of all, yeah. um, one who is 15 and a half, another one who is 13, so I'm dealing with teenage, mm -hmm, two mm -hmm. teenage girls, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it's not easy. Yeah. And um, their heads are buried in their phones, and, and, I, and I can see, and they've expressed the social um, kind of stress mm -hmm. that they have to keep up. I know the kids have these things called streaks now, mm -hmm. and if you don't you know, pay attention to these streaks, then you lose followers mm -hmm. and all of a sudden it's a social, you know, you become a misfit or whatever. I mean, it's all about who's following you and who's liking you. Mm -hmm. So it's stressful for our teens and I feel that they feel, they it's like a pull and a draw that they need to um, have their phones in their palms and doing something on them at all times. Mm -hmm. So there's a real um, pushback with that in terms of getting them into my direction, which is to um, focus on the communication skills, the good old fashioned conversation skills. And I talk a lot with my clients about reading body language. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, while I'm not a body language expert, mm -hmm. body language is a big, uh, big issue that we talk about. So it's not just reading what people are doing with their arms, and they're, you know, whether things are crossed or folded in, et cetera, but it's, it's also taking time to look at the facial expression and pay attention to something called micro expressions. Mm -hmm. Because if you're able to read what someone's body is saying, which by the way, your body language is about 80% of your message mm -hmm. and about only 20% are the words coming out of your mouth. You know people can lie through their teeth, right? Mm -hmm. But the body does not lie. Mm -hmm. So if you're speaking to someone and you're reading what's going on in their face and their lips are pursing or their eyes are squinting or something's, you know, all of a sudden they're wrinkling and they're frowning, you know something's going awry in the conversation. Mm -hmm. 
but our kids aren't picking up on these, what we call social cues, which are also social clues as to what's going on because they don't have this practice. So that's the detriment that's happening because of the phones. So, yeah, so very, how do you handle it? So I was going to say, this is a yeah, very long-winded yeah, answer. Yeah. So first of all, mm -hmm. we, you know, and it's very hard. You have to get really diligent because if you go into a restaurant and you look around, you see how many kids it's sitting with their norm. families yeah. are on their phones. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they're used as babysitters with little kids and they're on their iPads, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, and you really just have to say, put the phone away. Mm -hmm. So here's the thing. Adults, mm -hmm. when, when we have kids or someone's a doctor, someone who needs to be reached right away, still that phone never needs to be present on the table. Mm -hmm. Nothing should ever touch the table that isn't considered a dining implement. Okay. So that's number one. So let, let's just translate that for yes. a moment. <laughs> it's really important. <laughs> Very important, okay. خانم لیسا گشه در رابطه با اتیکت با تلفن میگن که مطمئن باشین که وقتی که به میز شام میرین یا میز غذا میرین تلفن روی میز قرار نگیره. بنابراین حتی اگر تلفن رو هم دکتر هستین، پزشک هستین یا کسی هستین که باید حتما چک بکنین روانشناس هست <تصفيق> این تلفن رو بذارین در کیفتون یا بذارین زیر میز یا جایی که روی میز قرار نگیره بنابراین سر میز شام یا سر میز غذا تلفن نمی بایست رو میز باشه نمبر وان So the next thing mm -hmm. is that if you are expecting an important call and by the way your children are never expecting important calls, right? right? You know, their friends and the latest emergency or drama at school does not yeah. factor in there. Yeah. But as adults, it happens, and, and the kids are like sponges, so they are emulating what we do. Mm -hmm. So if we are expecting an important call, a way to address that and teach our children is that we can say at the beginning of the meal that my phone is going to rest in my lap or in my pocket on vibration mode. Mm -hmm. But I'm expecting, you know, a deal is closing or a patient may call or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna handle, I'm gonna, when the call comes in, I'm going to handle it, I'll step away from the table okay. and then I'll, I'll make it fast and then as soon as I, you know, I'll come I'm back like and sit back down with you and, because I wanna give you, you are my priority. Great, so, I love that. So communication is, yes. is uh, key at key. the beginning. Very good. Um, communication, یکی از سی آی پیس لرنینگ پرنتینگ، اوکی؟ این خیلی مهمه دقت بکنین وقتی که حتی تلفنی رو قرار بهتون تلفن بشه یا قراری یه کاری مهمی هستش که نمیتونین تلفنتون رو بذارین در کیفتون یا جای دیگه میبایست که کامیونیکیت یا این گفتگو گفتمان صورت بگیره که شما از ابتدا به میز به کسانی که سر میز هستن به بچه ها به دوستتون به صلاح بگین که من یک تلفن مهمی قراره بهم به بشه از شما عذر میخوام از از قبل و اگر این تلفن به من آمد تلفنم رو ویبریشن خواهد بود صدا نخواهد کرد ولی اگر این تلفن کالو گرفتم من اکسکیوز میکنم خودم رو از سر میز و میرم و از اون کاری که باید انجام بشه تیک کیر میکنم بعد برمیگردم برای من همین که شما توضیح میدین و یه گفتمانی در رابطه با اون تلفن کال دارین یه اتیکت مهمی هستش که باید بهش توجه بکنین Thank you. Yes, of yeah. course. Uh, so mainly those two things, you know, so and for ladies, it's really important that um, they understand that they can leave their their uh, phone on their lap underneath their napkin. Mm. That's a good placement. And all we have to do is glance down mm -hmm. and read the caller ID to see if it's a child calling or some emergency is occurring. Uh, and, you know, gentlemen can place their phone on the inside pocket. And um, when we do take the call, it's also important to notice where you are so that you're standing, you know, out of a space where other people can hear your conversation. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't realize how their voice carries, mm -hmm. so they speak very loudly. So you want to try and find a place where you can hear so that you don't have to speak so loud that other people may be listening to your conversation. Wow, so you want to maintain that privacy. And um, I, I've noticed this at cultural um, gatherings 
things. I've noticed this because in our culture, just like Italians, you know, we speak very loud. Mm. And so oftentimes when we're at a gathering, you just hear, you notice that there's some people who are on their phones or not, not even on their phones and having these loud conversations where a lot of other people who are there in the same space, um, you know, it's a distraction. And so just being mindful of it. I think we now live in conscious environments where if we are a little mindful of how our communication, our communication may bring more peace or uh, lessen the peace of the environment. I think that awareness um, is really uh, beautiful. I think if we can do that and be intentional about it and pay attention to it, it would be really helpful. Yes. I love what you're saying because uh, if I do, or maybe, I don't know, the, the next book title I'm always kind of toying with and teasing with a title called Out to Lunch because I think a lot of people are mentally out to lunch. Mm. And um, so when you talk about mindfulness and using intention, mm -hmm. I'm trying to get people to come back to that space mm -hmm. because with manners, it takes, it takes an awareness, really, and it takes a mindfulness, and it takes you stopping and noticing another person. So the golden rule, which we talk about in here, mm -hmm. is huge if you think about it. Mm -hmm. Because, and, and what I tell my clients is to almost like a third eye, mm. to wear the golden rule right up here in your mm. frontal lobe so that you have it at the ready. Mm. Because if you're constantly going about your day, thinking about treating others the way you would like to be treated, mm -hmm. I promise you, you'll stop and you'll take a beat. And now to quote Ice Cube, which I do quite often, and you'll check yourself before you wreck yourself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love it. Um, and can I just say, uh, Cammie, uh, our um, daughter, she uh, sometimes will modify the golden rule and say, mommy, treat others the way they want to be treated. And she goes back and well, forth. Well, I taught the them that. Did you? I did okay, because, so there you go. But here's the reason, <laughs> but, but to, to just add the distinction yeah, yeah. there, that is the platinum rule. Ah. So there is that distinction between treating other people the way you would like to be treated mm -hmm. and treating mm -hmm. them the way they would oh, like to be treated. Beautiful. Because sometimes people don't want to be treated the same way that we like to be treated. Right, they right. have their own way that they'd like to be treated. Okay. So that takes it yet another level. So now I know where it came from. It was just beautiful <laughs> I think it when was she. Me. Yeah. I think no, it I'm was sure me. it was because it was in the same time, same. Um, a uh, time when all of the empathetic communication and all the just intent with compassion yes. started to, I, I just, I could see the cultivation. And you know, I've been working with them and talking to them and trying to interact with them in that way. But what you said is that when you have a, a teacher, a mentor, some authoritative figure mm -hmm. who they respect, they love, they look up to. Today they were so excited to oh, see you. I love that. And so you have had that impact nice. as a teacher, as a master, as someone who um, has brought them this, the connection, the communication where they have made the links mm. and they have experienced integration because of your teachings mm. and it's it's a blessing I, I have to say it's such a blessing and I'm so blessed and mm -hmm. so grateful and um, today we get to share this wonderful blessing with you all um, during Passover so mm. it, this is a type of freedom isn't it this is a type of freedom when it you is. get to share just um, it, it's an awakening it is, it is, yeah. and also to, to add to that as well, um, when I talk about this type of education, mm -hmm. um, the reason that I got into manners mm -hmm. is um, because I wanted to feel comfortable in my own skin, mm -hmm. and I wanted to teach my girls how to feel that way as well, and uh, regardless of the environment. So there is a freedom in that where you can walk into any situation and feel like you belong. Mm. That's a big deal, especially for women, mm -hmm. to have that strength and self-esteem, to feel that confidence, um, because there's so many things that kind of pull away from that feeling. Um, and confidence, confidence is a big, 
big um, deal for us. But also, um, I want to point out that manners are, they're twofold. So they're not just, they're not narcissistic mm -hmm. in just our own, just internal work, but really the emphasis should be on putting other people at ease. Mm. So Beautiful. when you think Beautiful. about this, just to give you a real life example, if you think about mm -hmm. standing in line, mm -hmm. let's say at the pharmacy, mm -hmm. and the line is long and it's slow, you know, if there's only one attendant there and, and a long line of people and someone in that line is huffing and puffing and stamping their feet and making it known that they're not happy to be waiting, maybe they start getting vocal, it makes other people very uncomfortable. Yeah right? Mm -hmm. So when we are well-mannered, we control that. Mm -hmm. we, we control that. Not only that, that, you are bringing peace into that environment. Yes. I've seen, I've witnessed this many times myself. Right. So in our community, um, many times with the long lines, خیلی از شما میدونین در باید چی صحبت میکنن وقتی که صفا شلوغ هستش بعضیا میخوان جلو بزنن بعضیا میخوان کات بکنن بعضیا عصبانی هستن و اون افرادی که با حوصله با آرامش with patience with peace learning intent are waiting are practicing delayed gratification, which is the key to success. We now know through all research, clinical research, there is a direct relationship with delayed gratification. And now, according to our um, wonderful Lisa Gachet, mm -hmm. it seems like with good manners, with the etiquette quotient, perhaps there is a relationship with happiness and finding your sweet spot where you feel confident and you can practice delayed gratification knowing that your behavior is intended to bring more um, compassion and grace and joy and manners, etiquette, to the world. So it is a learning experience, and just like peace learning, it is peace learning. It's a learning experience. It's a learning journey. And I think instead of being judgmental or critical or being, um, you know, th this is where I think those who have really high etiquette quotient or have a lot of good manners, um, I've noticed when they are more peaceful and they're more graceful, they're able to have um, more impact than when mm. they use it as a way to just have an upper hand or experience more power in the relationship or, right. you know, that, that class difference struggle. Yes. And so what I love about you, Lisa, is that you have a lot of grace. And from the very moment I met you, I felt it. I mean, you are stunning. You have such amazing manners. But it was that gracefulness and your uh, peace learning communication and how you um, uh, just took these children under your wings and you really gracefully taught them to have these manners uh, but more importantly, to focus on the way they bring more joy and peace into their communities with confidence. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, I do want to say, because I think there may be people listening mm -hmm. that do confuse this, this manners idea with perfection, and we mm -hmm. talked about this if, before we started today. Mm -hmm. So I just want to address that piece because you know, I did not grow up with this information. I, I didn't write my first thank you note, and I say it in my book, until I was married. And so this is absolutely an evolution. It's a learning process, and I am human, as we all are, and I have my faults, and there are times when I, you know, take foot and insert it right in my mouth because I, I make a grand mistake. Um, because it happens and I'm a parent and I get stressed and I get rushed and I don't always have ample amount of time to do things. Um, one thing I do want to say about that waiting in line, a little tip, mm -hmm. is that I always bring a book with me mm. or I'll use it as an opportunity on my phone to read something so that I'm educating myself or learning something while I'm waiting in line and I tell you it really helps to pass the time away. Mm. Even if you have to go down the magazine aisle and grab something, it just takes your mind off of how slow things are going. Mm -hmm. But going back to what I was saying is that, um, you know, we're not trained robots. We are fallible. And so it's a striving 
to be a little bit better because um, if we can embody this way of being, it does have that domino effect mm -hmm. on the people we're around. So there is a positive impact, absolutely. Um, but it does require a lot of work. Mm -hmm. So don't be fooled about that. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. it's a, for me, mm -hmm. it's a conscious way of being. Mm -hmm. I was not born, there are some people who are born this way. Really? I, they, they are, like oh, my, goodness. I say my husband when mm -hmm. I dedicate mm -hmm. it, because there are people who are just innately, every fiber of their bone is, or being is just, you know, how can I please someone else and what can I do to help and they're constantly empathetic and thinking of others I didn't grow up in that household mm -hmm. so for me I had to learn this and it's a daily practice mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. like meditation or any you know any kind of work that you do on yourself mm -hmm. this is work mm -hmm. and we're not talking about just pleasing others in that uh, way we're talking about someone who has empathy and the capacity right. to to connect mm -hmm. and to lower yeah. suffering and right. to provide a service and to come alongside others and to join and connect mm -hmm. in a peaceful way. So um, it, it's a very fine distinction. Yes. Um, در شاید فرهنگ ما آنانی که مرتلب هستند یا آنانی که کمال گرا هستند یا آنانی که سعی می کنند با مهرورزی چیز دیگه رو برای خودشون تهیه بکنن درباره اون صحبت نمی کنیم ما درباره شفقت و درباره اون مهربانی واقعی دلبندی و دلبستگی واقعی صحبت می کنیم که فردی رفتاری که می کنه برای این هستش که کنکت بکنه رابطه برقرار بکنه و دیگران رو بهشون به زندگیشون مهر بیشتر شادی بیشتر و نشات بیشتری بیاره این متفاوته این دو و خب همونطور که اشاره کردم خانم لیسا گشه در Beverly Hills Manners در کتابشون Has your book been translated to other languages? I do not know. Oh, I wonder. <laughs> so if you are interested to translate, yes. maybe perhaps reach out to Lisa because it would be a great book for uh, especially our friends, our parents watching from Iran. Absolutely. And, yeah. and, and while it does, I mean, you know, this is where I, I, I'm from New York originally, but I grew up in Beverly Hills, mm -hmm. so I felt like I could take some sort of ownership about this area. Right, right. It Because we have this close proximity to Hollywood mm -hmm. and the entertainment industry. I have sure. to say there's a lot of poking fun mm -hmm. in here, but the tips and tools are evergreen and they're universal, regardless of where Wonderful, you wonderful. So uh, get the book on Amazon, Lisa Gachet, the expert on enhancing, elevating your etiquette quotient, okay? It's been a pleasure, Lisa. Thank, Thank you so you. much for joining Mom Thank Talk. Thank you. Thank you All for right. having me. Bye. <laughs>